Hey there. So I wanted to come on today um, and introduce myself. I haven't really done that as of late and I wanted to make sure that I went ahead and did that. Some of you may already know me. I've had an online presence probably for um, at least 11 years now, I think. I think it's 11 years. I quit about 11 years ago, my full-time job to stay home with my boys who were much younger then. Um, that was a choice that my husband and myself made together, but financially it was a burden at first and due to financial burdens and boredom, bo <laughs> boredom issues, I decided to start blogging. I knew nothing about it at all. Um, and it's been one incredible journey since I made that decision. I absolutely love blogging. I have been doing it now, like I said, about 11 years. Um, I did take, I didn't take a break, but I had a couple of years where I was selling LuLaRoe. So some people may know me from my LuLaRoe days. That's a whole other topic. We can talk about that one day if you want, but that's not today. <laughs> so really, I just wanted to introduce myself and just give you a little bit of an explanation as to why Sometimes I am still doing hands-only videos and it is basically because I'm a little bit uncomfortable in my own self right now. Um, and that's because I just went through a cancer journey and I just completed chemotherapy a few months ago and I am still have my hair is growing back. The chemo uh, therapy that I did did cause me to lose my hair. I actually lost it twice like as if once wasn't bad enough. I had to go through that emotional journey two times because I did chemotherapy in the beginning. Um, when I found out I was sick, then we did a massive surgery that was the hardest thing I've ever encountered in my life. And then we did more chemotherapy. So my hair had started to grow back after the first four rounds and then it fell all, out, all over again and it was just as traumatic. So for me, it is something that I need to still work out and um, get comfortable with. And once my hair grows a little bit longer, I'll be fine. But for now, it does cause me a little bit of anxiety. Um, and I don't always want to show my face on camera. But here I am. I am Melissa, and it is so nice to meet you. Been through a lot. I am cancer-free. And I am more than happy to be here and be able to now start getting some of my energy levels back and start making some videos. So that kind of moves me into the next point. While I was super sick, um, I've always been a blogger. So I've been blogging all along. That has not stopped some of the physical stuff, like doing the recipes myself. I've had to... Um, do different ways. I've had to hire people to do that for me, but I am still very active with my blog. My blog is my baby. It's like my one of my children. So that has not stopped. But while I was home and so sick, there were days and days and days where I could not even pick up my MacBook and do any work. And I would just lay on the couch um, with no energy. So I watched a ton of YouTube. So that's why I've learned over the last nine months or so that it is important for you guys to see my face and really know who I am and have a connection with me and feel that same connection to me that I feel to you guys. Because as I said, I've been in this blogging world for 11 years. So I do have some really great people that I've met along the way that are subscribers or they follow my Facebook page. Um, they know me from New LuLaRoe, but this is now my formal introduction to you guys because you have not seen me that visibly on YouTube before. But I do realize after spending so much time watching YouTube that it is very important that you see my face and we have a connection. So I'm sure you won't mind if I occasionally have a head wrap on or I may even occasionally have a wig on. Um, but we're friends, so it doesn't matter. And it really doesn't matter, right? I have to just continue to tell myself I am cancer free. Hair does not matter. It does not make me who I am. 
my family loves me, my kids love me, and pretty soon I'm hoping you guys will too. So this is my first introduction. It is so nice to meet you guys. I hope that you will stay here with me and continue on in all of my journeys because I'm actually starting some journeys that many of you may be as well. I think it's fair to say that many of us are now becoming more of, let's say, homesteaders, okay? I am baking a lot of bread lately. Um, because of my cancer journey, um, we are eating more organic here. There's a lot of changes, but also the world is causing a lot of us to make some of these changes too. So on top of wanting to eat organic and eat healthy, gardening has become something that's important to me. But I think gardening is something that's becoming important to all of us. So this is something that we can do together. I mean, this is what I've done all these years. I just have done it more so with recipes. I started originally actually doing coupons. I was a coupon blogger. That was my original entry into the blogging field. So I've done a whole bunch of different things. And now here I am, I'm starting to do a lot of gardening. This is technically my second year gardening, but I'm gonna call it my first. And if you've watched this, then you'll know what the story is behind that and why I'm still going to call this my first year blogging last year, my first year gardening. Last year technically was my first year gardening. I planted, I had gotten a bunch of raised beds because I also have uh, rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> showing my age a little bit. So I have some issues occasionally with my hips and my back where I'll be in pain and I just can't bend over. So my husband put in a bunch of raised beds for me um, and got those all ready and I planted them all and I was so excited to garden for the first time. And then I immediately found out that I had cancer. So I really you know, didn't have the energy. My first journey in cancer was chemotherapy, was the first treatment in my treatment journey. So my garden, unfortunately, took backstage um, and my husband kind of had to take it over. So we didn't, and then I didn't even really harvest anything that was grown in the garden because I was too sick and just not feeling good enough. So I consider this my first year. But we did learn a few things last year. We did make a couple of mistakes that did at least sink in. So, I, you know, it's technically my second year, but I'm still learning mistakes. I really am. So let's go ahead and take this journey together. Because like I said, I think many of us are first time gardeners. And because of my blogging experience, um, I kind of dive into stuff and really want to find out how do I do this? What's the best way to do this? how can I share this knowledge with people? So traditionally, I share that knowledge with pen and paper, let's say, because I am a, a blogger. I'm not a vlogger. Um, but I've done enough videos and I've done enough LuLaRoe sales that there's no reason that I can't now be face to face with you. And let's start taking this journey together. Let's do this. I don't always have the energy to write a huge article. So I figure if I'm not writing it, then we might as well film it and learn this together. So today, what we're going to do is something super exciting that I've been really looking forward to. Today, we are going to be harvesting my basil. Um, so I have, we'll get to know my garden. I'm sure we'll do more videos, but today we're just gonna concentrate on my basil. My basil is ready to harvest. It is, just in case you're watching this in the future, Today, I think it is June 16th or so, 16th or 17th. Um, so they've been in, planted for about a month. I planted most, actually Memorial Day. So a little less than a month, but they're ready to be harvested. And if I harvest them now, they will have enough time to give me a second harvest. So that's really why I want to go ahead and get those harvested. And we are going to preserve them two different ways. We're going to freeze some and we're going to dry some out. And we'll do that together. So we're going to harvest them together and we're going to preserve them together. So let's go ahead and get this started because I really am so excited. Because first time gardening, I have my very own 
grown, homegrown basil, and I could not be more excited. All righty. So let's go out onto my deck and I have my herbs on the deck. So that's where we're going to go ahead and harvest these from. I have some Italian parsley here as well, which actually also looks like it needs to be harvested, but we're gonna concentrate on the basil today. So there they are. They look to be about eight to 10 inches tall already. So they're definitely, it's time. I believe it's once they reach six to eight inches, you can go ahead and start harvesting them. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna start snipping off some leaves and bring them inside and then preserve them together. Alrighty, I am hoping that you can see this since I am filming myself. Um, but where you want to cut your basil is you'll see that you have these little sections of leaves. There's one, there's two, three, and there's a fourth section at the bottom. I'm going to just cut mine above the second section. So I am taking two sections of leaves and I'm leaving two sections. And where I just cut, this will continue to grow out and up. So again, I am cutting just above. You don't wanna cut below, you wanna cut above. Alrighty. So we'll just go ahead and keep snipping here and get these all cut. Alrighty, we're gonna go ahead and do the same with my second plant. So again, I am just snipping right above the plants, the leaves. Um, and then this way they will continue to grow. Alrighty, I am going to make a wash for my vegetables using four cups of water and one cup of vinegar. Like I said, I saw a spotting lantern fly flew right onto one of my basil leaves when I was snipping them. So I wanna make sure I really get these clean before I go ahead and preserve them. All right, so one cup of white vinegar to four cups of water. All right, so now I'm going to take my basil and submerge it in the water. And then I'm gonna let it really kind of soak for a while just to make sure if there's anything there, it is going to get off. I'll massage it a little bit and then uh, like I said, I'm just gonna let it soak for a little bit just to make sure that they're really clean. Alrighty, going to go ahead and get my basil out of the water and I will start separating the leaves from the stem and I will just put them on this paper. These little baby leaves, they're not worth drying out, but those are certainly worth freezing using the method that we're going to be doing. And what I'll be doing is we are going to take these leaves and we're gonna blend them in the blender. Not as much like you would if you were making pesto, but, and I wanna check these leaves. That one I'm gonna throw away. Um, yeah. So, really hope i don't know do spotter and lantern flies they do right isn't that the thing that they eat all right well i'm going to use obviously the ones that have not been nibbled on and look healthy um okay good all right these are not 
I know a lot of people in my town have been seeing the little babies in their yards and they certainly are invasive, but this is the first time that I have seen one in my yard and I'm a little nervous about it. Hopefully I got him with the soapy water. Alrighty, so what we're going to do is take all these leaves off. I am going to oven bake at a very low temperature. I believe it's 180 degrees. I will double check, but I believe it's 180 degrees. And actually I should check now so that I can go ahead and just get the oven turned on. And we will slowly cook those or dry them out, I should say, not cook them. But we'll leave them in there for about an hour to dry out. And then those I will just crush up and use those as a dry herb in cooking. And then the remainder we will be putting into the blender and blending it, like I said, not as much as you would if you were making pesto. But we're going to blend them just enough so that they will fit better into some ice cube trays. So I will blend them with a few tablespoons of olive oil is all that you should need. And then we'll get them into some ice cube trays and get those frozen. And then once they're all frozen, I'll remove them from the ice cube tray and put them into a freezer Ziploc bag. And those will be in my freezer for any time that I wanna make sauce, which will be wonderful having in the freezer all winter long. So I'll go ahead and get this done and then we'll go ahead and move on to our two next steps. Alrighty, I'm just finishing up taking these leaves off and I have my oven preheating to 180 degrees and we are going to cook them for one to four hours until they are nice and dry. I am going to just rinse these one more time just to get, I don't know, I, I honestly don't know if the vinegar kind of lingers on at all. So I just want to give them one more rinsing. And we'll go ahead and get some on a cookie tray to put in the oven to dry out and then we'll put the rest into my blender and turn those into a kind of a basil puree that we can freeze. Okay, so I got these mostly dried off. I'm going to pick my bigger leaves and those are the ones that I will use to dry out and then I'll take the smaller leaves and we'll use those to turn into our little basil puree. And then again, we are going to just bake these in the oven for one to four hours until they're nice and dried out and we can crush them up and I will save it as dried basil for seasoning everything, right? What, what don't we wanna use basil for? We wanna use it on everything, right? <laughs> that must be a little bit of Italian in me coming out, right? <laughs> All right, so we'll get this done um, and then we'll move over and get the blender going. All right, so this is all that I'm gonna be putting into the oven. I wanna make sure that I have enough left to do, um, to freeze. So I will go ahead and put this in the oven again for one to four hours and we'll keep an eye on that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this put into my blender. And like I said, we're just probably um, gonna need two to three tablespoons of oil for olive oil. Okay, so I'm gonna take the rest of this basil put it into my Ninja Blender. I'll get the olive oil, we'll get that in, and we will get this blended and into our ice cube trays. I am so excited to have this fresh basil 
any time I want in the winter is going to be amazing. I am so excited by all of this. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Right, let's get the olive oil in. I'm gonna start with just two tablespoons since it's not a huge amount of basil. So we'll start with two tablespoons of olive oil and I'll see how that does. If we need another one, I can always add it to it. Okay. Oops. Haven't used this in so long. There we go. All right, got it on. And let's go ahead. Do I have it plugged in? <laughs> okay. Oh, I guess it would help if I turned it on, right? <laughs> It's been a little while. I've been sick for a long time. <laughs> ah! Let me get something and scrape down the sides. I can see that's necessary already. Okay. And I think I am gonna go ahead and add one more tablespoon of olive oil. Good. Get this lid back on. And that's probably enough already. We really do not have to blend this too much. I just want it small enough that it's going to be easy to fit it into our ice cube trays. I just, I think I see. Let's just double check. Yeah, I see a couple. Let me just. Push it down one more time, and we'll give it one more quick blend, and we'll be ready. Okay, that is going to be perfect, I'm sure of it. Yes, absolutely perfect. It definitely did not yield as much as I was kind of hoping, but here's my thinking. Anything that I can collect to preserve is going to help me regardless of how much it is, right? So just doing it and getting it done is important instead of wasting it. So I probably won't even be able to completely fill up this ice cube tray, but it doesn't matter, right? I'm gonna have more basil yet at the end of the season that I will also do the same with. And uh, anything preserved is helping my family, right? So I'm happy. I'm not disappointed. This is a success. All right, I'll go ahead and finish getting this into the ice cube trays, and then we'll go ahead and get it into the freezer. All right, I'm just finishing up getting this all. I probably... <laughs> We'll have about four or five, yeah, four ice cubes worth of frozen basil. But again, like I said, it's not really the quantity, it's just getting it done. Um, I think that's really important that we stop wasting as much. We start being more conscious about preserving stuff. Um, action is better than no action, right? So at least we're doing it. It's not as much as I was hoping, but I will get a whole nother harvest from my basil. And it's something. It's better than nothing, right? That's what, you know, if you're in an apartment and you don't have the space, I, I am actually growing my potatoes in some grow bags. This is my first, you know, it's my first year gardening. So it's my first experience with grow bags. And I have to tell you, it's been a huge success. So you can use grow bags if you're in an apartment or you don't have as much space. You know, action is better than no action. That's really the only point that I'm trying to make. I'm so sorry I had that blocking, but here we go. I'm using a plastic spoon because it kind of fit best. This is what I have, four ice cube trays worth. And I'm going to go ahead, put those in the freezer, and I'm proudly going to freeze them. Okay, so let's go ahead. 
and put this into the freezer and we'll get that frozen and let's take a look okay it's really just started so we will give that like i said one to four hours and they should actually all be ready at about the same time all righty it's time to go ahead and get this out of the oven They look perfect. I'm gonna feel them in one sec. Okay. Yep. That's exactly what we want. <laughs> Absolutely what we want. Perfect. I just came to check out our basil cubes. And I think I want a little light on the olive oil. Um, you really can do it based on your own judgment, whatever you feel is best, you know what you do with your own cooking and how much olive oil you may use um, with your basil. So I went ahead just to make sure and I just added a little more olive oil to the top. I just wanna make sure that they kind of hold up a little bit better um, in a cube form once they're frozen. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get this into our little jar. I'm just going to put it into a jar with a lid. Um, and that should be fine to keep this preserved for future use. And I put it on some parchment paper. I figured it would be easier. I could just fold the parchment paper and just pour it in here. I'm going to also use the parchment paper to crush the leaves so that I'm not really getting the oil from my hands onto my basil. So I'll just use that to crush it. And then we'll go ahead and put it into our jar. All set. So I'll go ahead and just pour this into our jar. Alrighty. And again, it's not a ton. It's not. But it's homegrown. And I have it. Here it is. And I'll be getting one more harvest yet. And I'll have even more. It's a start. And I love it. I have grabbed a freezer Ziploc bag, marked on it, and dated it, and I'm just going to go ahead and put my basil cubes into my freezer bag, and we'll put, get it into the freezer. So that's what it looks like. Nice little cube, I probably... And our last one. Oopsie, there we go, got it. So here we go. Again, not a ton, but four nice size freezer cubes of basil. And that's gonna taste delicious in some homemade sauce this winter. I can't wait. <laughs> 